If you're 17 weeks pregnant, you may be wondering when you're going to be feeling the baby move. Can you still do genetic testing? What changes your body is going through and what common symptoms you should expect? We're going to talk about all of this right now. But first, my name is Diana. You're watching In The Pink. And if you're new here, In The Pink means in good health and spirit. So if you like being healthy and happy, click subscribe because you are in the right place. So at 17 weeks of pregnancy, you have 23 weeks to go. Your baby weighs about four to five ounces and is around five inches long. Not only is your baby growing at incredible rates, they are starting to develop fat tissue, also called adipose tissue, on the neck and on the face and on the stomach. This gives your baby energy and also helps them to stay warm. Let's talk about their bones. At this point, the cartilage in their arms and legs have turned almost completely to bone. What I think is interesting is when your baby is born, they have 300 bones. As they grow into adults, many of those bones will fuse until they only have 206 bones as an adult. Your baby is starting to learn to suck and swallow, and in fact, they swallow the amniotic fluid. This might sound weird to you, but it actually helps your baby to develop the swallowing muscle that they will need as soon as they come out into the world so they can either nurse or take a bottle. It also stimulates the baby's gastrointestinal tract. The kidneys are functioning well now and they're producing urine from the amniotic fluid that they've swallowed. And that urine makes up the amniotic fluid. As for you, your baby bump should be showing by now, which means people are gonna wanna touch it. It's always been that way. Now, right now with COVID, it's probably not a good idea to let other people touch your tummy, but otherwise it's up to you on if you want people touching your belly or not. If you're not comfortable with it, it's totally okay to politely say no. Since your tummy is getting bigger, it's important to start thinking about your sleeping position. It's not recommended to sleep on your back anymore. This was really tough for me. I'm typically a back sleeper. But when you lay on your back, your growing uterus puts pressure on your ascending aorta, which makes it more difficult for blood to get back to your heart. The result is you start to feel short of breath. The best position is for you to lay on your side, particularly the left side, because this side puts the least amount of pressure on your aorta. Now, as far as comfort goes, you have some options. Some people absolutely love pregnancy pillows. Now, these are long pillows that you can maneuver under your head, behind your back, between your legs. I have many patients that absolutely love them and look at these pictures. It looks so luxuriously comfortable and I'll link them in the video description. Go ahead and check them out. As for me, I was probably a little bit more selective of my pillow choice. I always managed to spend my third trimester in the summer and I slept very, very hot. Like I personally didn't like a long hot pillow touching me when I slept. Everything that touched me had to basically earn its presence. So I was more of a minimalist. I had a pillow for my head. I had a special pillow for between my knees, which for me was absolutely a must. And as I got further along, I also used a support wedge for my tummy. I'll link those in the video description as well. Check them out. Just pick whatever you feel like is gonna be the most comfortable for you. While we're talking about the bed, let's talk a little bit about sex. Yes, it's still totally fine. You don't need to stop having sex unless your OB says to. And they might if you are bleeding or if you're having preterm contractions or something like that. That being said, you might have to modify how you have it now. Laying on your back might make you short of breath like I mentioned earlier. So the traditional missionary style might not be as comfortable. Bottom line is, if it's a position you're comfortable with, it's fine to do. You might notice more headaches now. These are called second trimester headaches and they're fairly common, especially if you already have a history of migraines. Remember though, don't take ibuprofen or Aleve for your headaches. Instead, take Tylenol. A helpful combination might be Tylenol with a caffeinated drink. If you don't get any relief from that, talk to your OB. There are some safe prescriptions that they can give you to help you relieve your pain. Finally, you might start to notice small baby movements. This is called quickening. This early, it probably just feels like little flutters in your stomach. And if this is your first pregnancy, it's a little hard to recognize, but you will love feeling these first sensations of life inside you. If you haven't felt them yet, don't worry because you will within the next few weeks. It is still possible to get genetic testing if this is something that you wanna do. Second trimester screening can be done up to 19 weeks and six days. Talk to your OB if this is something that you wanna have done. If you wanna know more about second trimester screening, I talked a lot about that in week 16. So be sure to check that out. Make sure to hit subscribe and the notification bell so that you won't miss next week's video. Right here, I will link to my pregnancy week by week playlist. Click on that and I will see you over there. These tests don't tell you that your baby absolutely has one of these disorders, just that there is a higher chance that they do.